for this next nomenclature video, uh, we're going to be speaking about oxides, hydroxides, and hydrides. And these chemical types are classified basically by the type of anion they're adding to the mix. So the cation is just like in the video of halloid salts, which I urge you to watch so that you can understand the naming style. The cation is always going to be a metal. And remember, we have metals that only have one valence, or we have metals that have two or more valences, okay? So in this case, the cation is always going to be metallic. That's how we recognize these. And the anion, depending on the family, is going to be oxygen, which is invariably minus 2 in its, ne in its charge. We're going to have hydroxide, which is invariably minus 1 in its charge. And we have hydrogen, which is always going to be negative 1 in its charge when it's acting as an anion, right? So when we write the chemical symbols, we're going to get O minus 2, OH, that may need parentheses sometimes, depending on what you're combining with, and finally hydrogen, which is always minus 1. And remember, metals with one valence, notable exceptions from the transition metals are silver and zinc with plus 2 and plus 1, aluminum, which is a representative metal, so that's not really an exception. But our typical ones, which is sodium, uh, magnesium, plus two, calcium, uh, what else? Potassium. And with multiple valences, the usual suspects, copper, plus one, plus two, iron, plus two, plus three, uh, lead, plus two, plus four, and remember, these charges and everything, I'm not making it up. You can find it on a periodic table or you can find it in an oxidation chart so that you can make the different combinations. Now, once again, if I have a metal and an oxygen ion, anion, I'm going to form an oxide. If I have a metal as a cation and a hydroxide as the anion, I'm going to get a hydroxide. And if I have a metal and a hydrogen atom as an anion, I'm going to get a hydride. Naming style is going to be exactly the same. So I'm going to separate it for you a little bit right here with different colors. If we only have metals with one valence, the naming style is very simple. We just say name of the metal. And depending on the type of cation plus the word, oxide and I put it between quotation marks because it's literally you have to write oxide depending on the cation it's going to be hydroxide or if the cation is if the, if the anion is hydrogen we're going to get the word hydride okay so that's for metals with one valence concrete examples of this let's do a little mixture and let's do some with sodium sodium is Na plus and as I remember telling you, oxygen is minus 2, OH is minus 1, and hydrogen is minus 1. So once we combine all of these, what are we going to get? We're going to get Na2O1. We don't do the 1, so we just write Na2O. Then we get Na plus 1, OH minus. When we do the crisscross, we get 1s. So we don't even write them, NaOH. And last but not least, sodium plus one, hydrogen minus one. When we do the crisscross, what are we going to get? Sodium hydride. And again, what is the name of our metal? Only one valence. So name of metal plus the word. Sodium oxide. For this one, the anion is hydroxide. So we get sodium hydroxide. And last but not least, sodium. And since my anion is hydrogen, the word is hydride. Okay? So again, this is for metals with only one valence, such as the case of sodium. Once again, and if not, again, I invite you to watch the uh, halloid salt video, which goes very deep into this topic again. We're just changing the name of the anion. When we have metals with two or more valences, we use uh, we add something additional because remember we have two types of names. So for the modern name or the stock system modern or stock name, 
we're going to use the formula for the nomenclature is going to be metal name uh, Roman numeral which indicates the valence of the metal plus the word oxide if we combine it with oxygen plus the word hydroxide if we combine it with a hydroxide ion hydroxide ion or with the word hydride if the anion was hydrogen so this is for modern or stock name system and when we speak about classic nomenclature classic nomenclature nomenclature I'm going to try to write faster we use the metal name the Latin metal name with ick ending this is two options ick ending or us ending this one for the lower valence and this one for the higher valence and then after we add this we don't need a Roman numeral and we add the word oxide hydroxide or hydride in its ultimate form if we use hydrogen as the anion let's do some specific examples of this again we have something such as copper copper can be plus one copper can be plus two and then we mix it with all these different types of anions that we have here OH or hydrogen and we're gonna get different formulas how many different compounds we can get six compounds from this mixture so the first compound that we get is one and two Cu2O and if we do two and two CuO we can also do CuOH or here when we do the interchange CuOH in parentheses two and finally CuH or CuH2 both of these compounds again have the same naming uh, the same naming style but we use the valence for the different uh, to separate which is which so for example this guy up here is going to be copper which is my metal name since we used the one valence the Roman numeral has to be Roman numeral one and since it's with oxygen we use the word oxide this compound which we also use copper one is going to be copper hydroxide and last but not least copper one hydride the ones on the bottom where we use a positive two valence are going to be same thing copper is the middle name roman numeral two for the valence oxide when we combine it with oxygen hydroxide when we combine it with hydroxide or hydride when we combine it with hydrogen and that's for the uh, modern name in this case again copper has two valences plus one and plus two the lower valence and the higher valence so in this case these compounds can also be named using their classic nomenclature but we're going to substitute copper one for the word cupras because uh, copper in latin is cuprum so we substitute the us ending and this becomes cupras and copper 2 is going to become cupric because it's a higher valence so we get instead of saying copper 1 we say copper oxide copper 1 oxide we are going to say cuprous oxide or cupric oxide this is especially helpful in the lab because many compounds still use this old old style nomenclature and then again copper 1 is substituted by cupra so copper one oxide, cuprous oxide, cupric oxide, or we get cuprous hydroxide when we combine it with hydroxide, or cuprous hydride, or in its defect, cupric hydroxide, which is this one, cupric hydride, which is that last one, and that's basically the naming cell for these families. All you have to do is identify what we're talking about if we're dealing with oxygen it's gonna be oxides if you're dealing with hydroxide as the anion we're talking about hydroxides and if we're dealing with hydrogen we're talking about hydrides